All right, as you can see on our top left of the screen, we have the stage missions. We'll click this. You can see here in the events tab at the top left, play five duels in a player versus player. Surrenders are not counted and you will win yourself a skill ticket. This can be used to obtain any skill for your character in the game. Very valuable, very useful. If we click across to world, our dual world missions here is complete dual quizzes up to level one to five in the dual trials. Once we've done that, we will have completed all stage missions. If we go across to special, you can see complete all weekly missions, play five player versus player duels, win 10 duels, summon 30 monsters, use spell cards 15 times, obtain a card from the trader one time, defeat legendary duelists three times. And that will have netted you a couple of gems. Weekly missions are pretty easy to do. You can do them over time. There's also lifetime missions. You can have a sneak peek on how to uh, obtain some of this. You can see there's certain skills, there's cards, there's uh, extra deck slots, much that you can unlock. So I'd get familiar with this and work out your priorities. As a new player, you typically want to look at your characters. So if we click Joey Wheeler here, you can see we chose Seto Kaiba to start us off with. You can choose out of him and Yami Yugi. And if we go to this little slot here, you'll see that we can customize our current deck, which is what this item, this one's here for, the one on the bottom. And this will go to our deck slots. So you can view all the decks you have available. So if we click into Seto Kaiba's deck here. You can see what we're working with. You can see what we have available. Um, and something worth mentioning to start off with, especially if you start with Arc 5 World, these pendulum scale monsters here are fantastic. So you have a scale eight and a scale one, meaning when these are both in your scale zones or in your back row, you can summon any monster between the level of two and seven and up to three monsters for all your zones. So very cool. Now we'll go into an NPC duel. These start off very easy to win. We'll click duel here and I'll take you through what a duel's going to look like. Now again, you would have seen the tutorial which would have explained a fair bit. Both characters flip a coin at the start and that dictates who will begin the duel. Here we go. Shall we duel? Duel. Now, if you go to your log here on the right hand side, this is available on PC, just on your right hand side. On mobile, I believe you need to hit your drop down menu. But you can see our skill activated at the start of the match, which put a mountain field card spell in our field zone. Uh, the first thing to really point out for people that haven't played this game, you have three monster zones, three spell and trap zones, field zone, a graveyard, and a banished zone. So, to get us started, we have three monsters that all can be summoned. The typical Yu-Gi-Oh rules apply here. So any monster between the level of one to four, sometimes dependent on their effect, can be normal summoned for free once per turn. You get one normal summon typically. You can get extra normal summons with certain cards, but one normal summon per turn, and you can special summon as much as you like dependent once again on sometimes cards having effects stipulating you can't do so so let's get started we'll have a look here we've got 
1300 beta, a 1200 beta, and a, le a, thousand, a 1k beta with some of our highest attack. You can set the card, which is face down defense mode, or you can normal summon, which is face up attack mode. That's all we can do for this turn. We'll end the turn. You can see the NPC has summoned their monster, which has got a bonus off our field spell. We'll summon again another monster. Now I'm going to attack with our 1200 beta. And we can attack for life points directly. As you can see, both players start out with 4,000 life points. There are skills to manipulate this, obviously with some drawbacks, but the duels are designed to be fast paced and very quick. As you can see, the NPC is going to be summoning low attack monsters face up an attack, which taking on a real player, this won't happen. We have a chance to tribute for our card. So any cards between the level five and six take one tribute. Once again, dependent sometimes on effects. And cards from seven to 12 take two monsters to summon. Once again, dependent on effects. Some effects out there and some monsters will say that you need three tributes, sometimes more. So let's summon our Blue Eyes White Dragon. It says we need two tributes. We'll select our tributes. As this is one of his main cards, there's a summoning animation for it. We've got our boost from our field spell. As you can see, we won the duel. Something interesting to note as you play with your character, if you click them, you will have unique voice lines to taunt your opponent with. These are quite fun. As you can see, there is a campaign currently running that gives us double gate keys and gold. So. Not only did we get four colors, we also got an extra four colors. And dependent on our score is dependent on how many chests we get from defeating each duelist. So if we go back to our stage missions, go to our world missions, this is the one that we want to focus on as a new player. We need to do dual quizzes. So. I'm going to quickly do those and show you what a level up in the stage missions looks like. But before we do that, I'm going to make mention that you can see in the top left hand corner here, we have our respawn counter for our NPCs to respawn. And we also have how many NPCs are available. Before clicking your stage mission to level it up, please make sure you defeat every duelist available. They will automatically replenish as you level up the stage mission and you want to get every single bit of experience that you possibly can. All right, I'll be back here in one moment. All right, as you can see, we've completed the mission challenges. So we'll go back to world here. We'll click the duel quizzes and we'll click the complete all stages. Get our 50 gems, level up to stage five. As you progress through stage missions, new character unlocks will become available. As you can see, we have unlocked Taya. She'll have her own little spiel about the dual world. Global chat's been unlocked. Something that we want to stop. 
because global chat is super toxic and never relevant. <laughs> As you can see, our world missions, we have win one duel, win a duel against Taya. So we can see we've got the tour guide from the underworld. We've got the mission bingo event, which is currently running. But prior to this, we hadn't gotten further enough in the game to be partaking the event. So we go across the PvP arena. This is where you'll find most of your event locations. So if we click on the bingo event, we've played three duels. We entered the deck editor. We've defeated the standard duelist. We entered the duel studio. We opened up two gifts. We need to reach stage six. We need to play a duel against the Vagabond, which is another NPC that will appear. And we'll need to visit Trader EX and play a KC Cup duel. If we click Receive All, as you can see, we get a couple of different bits of currency. We've got a bingo, so we get some extra gold. These bingo sheets are fantastic. So if you have a look at the rewards, there's lots of gems, lots of different currencies, different useful items, etc. So as we play along, remember to click your interaction zones. Look around the screen for different uh, legendary doors which can appear out walking about and about as well. But for the sake of this, I will show you, for instance, we go to the dual gate. We want to take on Taya, who now appears here. Once you better level 10, you'll unlock level 20, level 30, level 40. Those come later on in the game as you progress further. So as you can see, we'll take on Taya now. I'm ready to duel. And we'll duel her. Now I did change up the deck. I included those new pendulum cards. I removed the mountain. It's a very generic field spell. Let's see. You Sucks when it's used against us. Here I go. So Thank we'll summon you. our little flame boy here. End our turn. Now, something important to add. As you're taking on characters, or even other people, if you see a card that you've never seen, but we'll click on it, it will explain what it is. Either in a little box in the middle of the screen or down to the left here which you can increase the font size if you have bad eyes like me etc so another thing to point out if the drop down menu here you can adjust our volume you can go top down view player view the player view will allow to see your monsters is in a holographic form state which is kind of cool but the angle is a little strange self chain you want to have turned on so self-chaining is when you're chaining another card to the activation of a prior card. You can change this one here to the toggle button, so the activation confirmation. So you can toggle it off, toggle it on, meaning it's going to prompt you every time, or have it set to auto, which is the game's going to detect, okay, you have a card that you can activate in response to that. Turn 3D visuals on. Character lines, display opponent's taunts, you can turn that off at a noise you, show their player name. You can turn these all off depending on what you prefer to do. And deck info will give you deck info that you have running into the store. So, let's carry on. Let's defeat Taya. Now off screen I did try to take on a Shizu, it seems that our cards aren't powerful enough just yet. We'd have to get extremely fortunate. But that's okay. Work with what we got. And that's Taya taken care of. As we go further along, you'll see we get our experience. And this is the next part that I wanted to make mention of. So as you're leveling up a character of experience, in each level you have an unlock. So our next level is some gems. Then we got a card, another card, gems, a skill. Which you can see what the skill does and who's available for in the game. You have to unlock it for each character. 
Another card, gems, another card, gems, so on and so forth. Great to maximize your levels of all your characters as you play through the game. The game will encourage you to play, use different characters as you go on, but the further you get along a character, the better the rewards. As you can see, we got a random card drop from Taya there, which is a quite an awful card. A level five meaning it requires a tribute, normal monster, no effect. So Taya is going to have a little bit of a spiel there. If we go stage missions, you see that we uh, won one duel and we also took on Taya. Receive an item. For the sake of this, I'm not going to take on every duelist. Let's pretend we did. That's what you want to do before clicking this one. You click this. Level 6. Level 20 is now available for duelists at the gate. So as you progress on, you will unlock level leveled legendary duelists going up to our, up to level 40 decks. You can use auto duel. So auto duel is quite interesting. This is about the character unlock missions. PvP arena is now available. Reward multipliers have been set. And as you can see in the world missions, we now have missions to unlock Tao. So, defeat her in a level 20 duel, use the spell and trap card five times. Which can be done anywhere in the game. So, the event for the KC Cup, which is our current event running in Duel Links. This is a cup that people compete in competitively and performing super well can net you some IRL prizes too. So participating in this is very important. Don't be scared of playing. Even if your character is absolutely trash, you get great rewards just from participating. So as you're building up the game, you want to get these rewards regardless and as you can see, our bingo sheet has now got the level 6. So we've got another bingo, we've got an extra life. But now what I want to show you is, if we click on an NPC here, we've now got the auto duel feature and we've got our reward multiplier. So if we click 3, taking on this NPC will count as taking on 3 NPCs at once. So the rewards are times by three. And then we can do an auto duel. Now I'm going to show you for the sake of it, um, but I would highly suggest this early on in the game, focus one at a time so you can focus on getting your stage missions because the NPCs recharge over a long period of time. You wanna make the most out of your NPCs. If you wanna play this the most efficiently possible, you wanna make sure that Every single battle you do gets you closer to completing your stage mission. And when you complete the stage mission, the NPCs will reset. So you're leveling up your character, you're not using any real money in the game, and you're using everything as more efficiently as possible. But let's show you an auto door. So, little Emma here, we're gonna crush her. Sorry, Emma. Oh. Auto duel is on, so the AI is taking control. The AI will make pretty poor decisions sometimes, but if you set up a correct deck, AI can uh, cruise through most duels for you. As you can see, it's very quick. You can turn that on in the middle of a battle. Our multiplier is paid off here. So it times our experience by three, so 1500. Got some gems. And our rewards have been times by three. And now if we click Kyber here, we can change our character back to Joey, etc. I suggest trying to ba balance the leveling up your characters every now and then. But if we go to stage missions here, we've now got the event 
mission, so just play a duel in the KC Cup. The surrenders are not counted. You get 10 gems. Two, two duels, and it's another 15. Three duels, 25. And then you'll see the exclusive event tokens. So with the tokens, you can use the tokens to purchase certain cards. Or in this one, there's packs of cards. So I suggest going through, getting your EX tokens, and we'll go to this little man here down the bottom left, the Trader EX. So EX jewels are tied to events, each event having their own. Once an event is finished, don't worry, your tokens are there for an extra couple of days. And as you can see, these are the tokens you can exchange for packs with the KC Cup. So you saw before, just participating and going through four duels, you'll get a hundred tokens. That's one of those packs, easy. And these packs, you can actually see, if you view the list, this pack, the special pack three, you can see what cards you can potentially achieve. Which is cool. If you go across to the next one, you can view the list for that. There's going to be some fan favorites here, like the Element of Hero Neos, Dark Audition Girl, some cool support cards for different archetypes in the game. And you can go to the last pack here, and that's got some Blue Eyes, White Dragons, Dark Magicians, Red Eyes. Some of the cool character cards that you probably want to get just for the sake of getting it. But there's also great support cards like Enemy Controller. Polymerization is always great to have three of those, etc. Uh, you also see exclusive artworks of certain cards that you can only get through this event, which is really neat. So it really encourages you to play through the game. Now, one thing I really wanted to touch on is if we go over to the Dual Studio, you can click in Card Catalog. This will display all our cards that we have in the game. Now, if we click this up arrow, we can filter list everything. We want to click this icon here. This will only show the cards that we have physically. As you can see, most of the cards here we've got from three to one copies. Once you start playing this game regularly, you will start to build up cards where you will have more than three. What you want to do there is that you can't ever play more than three one card in one deck anyway. You want to click batch convert. So all normal and R rarity cards exceeding the amount specified to the remain in your possession will be converted to gold and items. So you can convert by basic, glossy and prismatic. So basic, it just means there's no shine to the card. Glossy just means there's a little bit of shine. Prismatic means there's like very shiny. Now you want to keep three of each for each card. So if I had nine copies of Baby Dragon, three of them being basic, three of them being glossy, three of them being prismatic, doing this means that it won't pick any of those, uh, those cards nine because we've got three of each different kind. Uh, you can also click super rare and ultra rare to be collected for conversion. As you can see, none of it meets our requirements. We don't have three of any kind of card. But it's important to realize to go through that, get yourself some currency early on. Because we are now going back to the shop. And that's where our card trader is and he uses a lot of the currency there. But we haven't unlocked him. Now, if we go to the shop itself, you're probably wondering, how should I spend my gems? This is something I'm going to take you through in the next video. But I wanted to make a special mention. There's a check out these items here, which is these bundles. This costs real money. So if you are playing on an Android phone, here's a top tip. Get yourself the Google Surveys app. You will get Google Store Balance credit for participating in those surveys. I use that many times to then make in-game purchases. 
with this. Same with Steam. Once you get Steam cards, claim them all and you'll have currency to use within the game. Or if you don't mind spending money on a free to play game, you can look at these bundles. These bundles are fantastic. So these are going to give you access to some of the best technical support cards in the game. Some of them are old, which is not so true, like Mirror Wall. Mirror Wall is not very useful in the modern meta, so to speak. But if we read the Mirror Wall here, you get yourself a copy of the Mirror Wall, which is a ultra rare card. You get a deck mat, which has got the Mirror Wall on it, which is pretty cool looking. And you also get 10 packs of the latest box included which is really, really neat. So you can end up netting yourself extra ultra rares or super rares from those 10 packs. And as you can see, it's $5 US. Important to make mention the Steam version will be automatically in USD, where your mobile version will actually show your local currency. So as you can see, giving yourself access to, uh, let's see, Super Rush Headlong, it's a super rare card give you six packs to choose from a deck sleeve and the actual card itself for $3.99 but this card here the sphere Karibo, is a super popular card it's a hand trap not many of those in the game gives you a deck mat gives you the card and gives you 10 packs from the latest box and it's five USD now to give you an idea if we went to boxes and we clicked chaotic soldiers which is the latest one to get ourselves 10 packs in the game it would cost 500 gems or you can buy 10 packs which give you it gives you an extra 100 gems from doing so for 10 usd so for 5 usd you're getting an ultra rare card you're getting a, a deck mat sometimes and you're getting 10 packs so you can see just from doing so of going to the must buy section and checking out the bundles you can save yourself money and get yourself good cards it's worthwhile trying to chip away at these depending on what deck you want to build anyways i think that's enough for one video hopefully i've covered a lot for you uh this is new for me so please give me some feedback in the comment section below like the video interact with the video i'm sure that helps with the algorithm um, and i'll see you in the next video where we'll go through how to use gems, how to use tickets, and some more advanced settings within the game. I mean, Captain Condiment, your host for this series. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.